So as a reminder to everyone, this session is being recorded. And we're one after, so we'll just go ahead and start. Welcome, everybody. Uh, I'm John Higwood. I'm one of the adjudication engineering managers. Uh, on the call or presentation as well is Michael Drake, the assistant state engineer over the adjudication section. Also, we have Michael Ferguson, the assistant attorney general, or an assistant attorney general. Uh, this session is being recorded and will be made available on our YouTube channel. This is the public meeting for the Draper proposed determination in Utah Lake and Jordan River water right adjudication. It was filed with the courts on December 29th, 2022. The goal is to present the adjudication process, uh, give an introduction to the pr proposed determination, and how to interface with it. So the agenda for today is to review the adjudication process and where Draper stands in it, uh, discuss how to access the proposed determination and hydrographic survey, give an overview of the proposed determination, go through components and how to read them, uh, do an overview of the hydrographic survey map and what it represents, and provide a question period at the end to answer any questions you have uh, you may also email them to waterrights underscore adjudication utah.gov. So a general stream adjudication, what is it and why? Uh, it joins all the water users within a stream drainage and the state engineer as parties to a litigation to obtain a final comprehensive decree on all the water rights within that drainage area. The map shows that every major river drainage in the state of Utah is currently or has already gone through a general stream adjudication order. Due to the size and growth, uh, the main river drainages are often split into small areas, divisions, and subdivisions. The adjudication process. It's a statutory process that allows us to come and evaluate water rights in an area, recommend them to the court, and after resolving any objections, obtain a decree on the process. Sorry, the process is split into three, three phases. The mint is the initiation phase. It occurred in fall of 2018. The light blue was the claim filing phase, which uh, started in fall of 2018 and went through the summer of 2019 uh, with the publishing of the list of unclaimed rights. Uh, the beige is where we currently are and it's the claim investigation and proposed determination phase. So the claims were investigated uh, through 2018 through 2022. And Result in those investigations resulted in state engineering recommendations being uh, set, being developed for each of the individual rights. Then each of those uh, state engineer recommendations or SERs were compiled into a document called the Proposed Determination or PD. So the Draper proposed determination was published in December 20, on December 29th, 2022, and started a 90-day period to file objections. That period to file objections ends on March 29th, 2023. A public meeting is occurring today. And then after the objection filing period, uh, we'll then work to resolve objections. And once those are resolved, a uh, final interlocutory decree will be issued. So accessing the proposed determination. Uh, the easiest way, if you do not already have a copy, is the a link to the proposed determination is in the material section of the meeting info page for this public meeting. Or you can type in the URL. 
uh, we sent out a notice of the proposed determination to all water rights owners listed on records with the state engineer, any claimant who submitted claims for the Draper adjudication, any registered agent for corporate entities uh, owning water rights or having filed claims within the adjudication boundary, and any council of record who have filed an appearance in the court. Proposed determination contents. Uh, so we'll go over the title page, the notice to water users, the preambles, location map, the priority schedule, the description of water rights, disallowed rights, and the alphabetical index. So the title page has the jurisdiction, the court, which in this case is the third judicial district court the general adjudication description and civil case number, the hydrological division and subdivision name, the area and book numbers. The notice to water users. Key part of this is the civil number, which you need to file an objection, and the instructions on how to file an objection within the 90-day period. The preamble. This is an in-depth description of the proposed determination and each of its section sections. Uh, one important part of it is the prior decree section. The basic idea of this is we considered and encompassed all prior decrees into our evaluation. So the Draper proposed determination includes the 1901 Morris Decree and 1909 Booth Decrees, both relating to Utah Lake and Jordan River, and the 1919 Bear Canyon Creek Decree. You can read the prior decrees in their entirety on our website. The Draper proposed determination location. So this is the boundaries of the subdivision. Uh, we only included water rights with a point of diversion or POD within the Draper subdivision boundary. Uh, next is the priority schedule. This is important because in Utah, water is distributed based off prior appropriation. If shortages were to happen, the priority date determines who would receive water first. So on this, you will find the water source uh, for each group the priority date, the flow rate or annual volume, the water right number, which identifies it on the state engineer's record and what, we, what you would need to reference if you chose to object, and the owner of record. This may not be the person who is currently using the water. The county records office is the official office of record for ownership. If you need to update title, we can help you through that process using a report of conveyance. So now I will go over uh, each section, each part of the description of water rights. Once again, have the water right number, which identifies the water right on the state engineer's records, the name slash owner of record, uh, if there are several owners, sometimes we describe the ownership breakdown or the ownership interest. The type of right, this would either be an application to appropriate, a decree, diligence claim, uh, the quantity of water, uh, either in a flow or the volume the priority date and source defines when the right was first put to use and from what source. The point of diversion or POD where water is diverted from the national environment. Uh, the PLS description gives the section township and range. Uh, it can be a well or diversion from a stream flow. The water use group number so grouped rights that have a common use and place of use. 
uh, the nature of use. This describes how water is allowed to be placed to beneficial use. So examples are irrigation, stock watering, domestic purposes, municipal, or other industrial purposes. Period of use. The irrigation season is typically April 1st through October 31st, but it is area specific. Uh, domestic use is year round. The sole supply, the amount of beneficial use allowed under the particular water right, and the group total. Uh, the place of use matrix. So this is the section, township, and range. There'll be a row for each different uh, section, township, or range. Those are then split into quarter sections, and then again split into quarter quarter sections, or 40 acre tracks or lots. And then on the right, uh, place of use, the acreage total per section will be broken out and a group total given. And there's also a section for general comments. Uh, this is to add any more information that needs to be identified for a specific water right. An example is this is where we would specify the section and paragraph of a decree. Forfeited rights. Uh, these rights are recommended to forfeiture due to evidence of non-use for a period of seven years or more, and it's based off state statute. So once again, for these rights, you will find the water right number, the name of the owner of record, the points of diversion and source, and once again, if you object to if you have a right on the forfeited list and wish to object, you have 90 days from when it was filed and that end date is uh, March 29th, 2023. And would have to file with the third district court. Invalid gangs. These are rights being disallowed due to being invalid, meaning there's no legal basis for the right. They may not meet the standards outlined in state statute. For example, claiming pre-statutory use without providing proper documentation, or someone just started using right with ever, without ever filing the proper paperwork. And for these, you'll find the water right number, the name of the owner of record, and the point of diversion and source. Uh, the alphabetical index. This is a list of all the water rights in the proposed determination based of ownership alphabetically. So it shows the page number of water rights in the proposed determination to find info on the owner and water right. So you have the name of the owner of record, the point of diversion or source, the water right number, and the page numbers. So now on to the hydrographic survey map. So the hydrographic survey maps are a visual record of the findings of the water use uses in a geographic subdivision. So a few pieces to go over. We have the north arrow scale and scale bar. Now note the page size is intended to be uh, two feet by three feet. We have the map legend, which identifies the book boundaries, uh, the PODs allowed, disallowed, abandoned, water use groups, and the irrigations that have been recognized for each use group. A map location of the current page you're on and where it lies within the subdivision. And this mapping will all be integrated into our online mapping software on our website. Oh. Sorry, I forgot to skip it. So 
So who can I contact to discuss the adjudication process? Well, you can contact myself at johnhagwood at utah.gov or my phone number is listed. You can also contact Michael Drake, Michael Drake at utah.gov, also phone number listed, or use the general adjudication line of 801-538-5282. You can also come into our office. We have a great public inquiry team that would love to help you. And so now we're past the general part and can open up the floor to any questions. You can type your, you can either unmute your mic or type your questions into the chat. Well, before we stop recording, Michael, uh, Drake, was there anything else that you'd want to hit? Let's see. No, I, I think you've covered it. Um, so I think we can go ahead and end the recording. Okay, we'll go ahead and end the recording. And if anyone wants to ask questions offline.